Okay, so you're running a business and you're using the periodic inventory system. So every time you make a sale, you record the sale, but you do not update your inventory. You get to December 31st, you finally take an ending inventory, so now you know how much goods you had at the end of the year. You know your beginning inventory, you added that your purchases, you subtract the ending inventory you just calculated, and now you know what your cost of goods sold was. So you can finally create your income statement, and you can finally create your balance sheet. But the problem is, long before December 31st, you undoubtedly need some financial statements. Either you had to show them to your bank, or you needed them for your own internal purposes, or maybe you had a warehouse burned down and you had to tell the insurer what your inventory was at the time of the fire. So how do we do that? What we do is we make estimated financial statements. And the easiest, simplest way to do that is the gross profit method. That method assumes that last year's gross profit margin is approximately equal to this year's gross profit margin. So if last year your total sales were a million and your cost of goods sold were 70% of that, your gross profit would be 30% of your sales. So even in the periodic inventory system, you know what your sales are. You get to January 31st, it's time to create your financial statements. You know your sales, you assume the same relationship exists, and so you can guess that your gross profit is about $30,000. If you know your beginning inventory, you know your purchases, and you know your estimated cost of goods sold, then you know what your estimated ending inventory was, and you can create some estimated financial statements as of January 31st. But this is intermediate accounting, so we don't get to do anything easy. Instead, we're going to use the retail inventory method, which says, whenever we buy something into inventory, we not only keep track of what we paid for it, but what we plan to sell it for. That way we have a numerical relationship between what we paid for our stuff and what we plan to sell it for. Then we know our beginning inventory at retail levels. We add our purchases at retail levels. That gives us our total goods available for sale at retail prices. We subtract our sales and that must give us what's left in inventory. That number, of course, is valued at retail prices, and we have to multiply that times our cost to retail ratio to come up with our estimated ending inventory at our costs. The reason we like the uh, retail inventory method to better is because it's using this year's planned relationship between our costs and our retail prices rather than the historical relationship that it existed last year. So like I say, we'll take our beginning inventory at retail, we'll add our purchases at uh, the estimated retail prices, that'll give us our total goods available for sale at retail, we'll deduct our sales and what we're left with is our ending inventory at retail prices. Then we can use our calculate a relationship between costs and retail prices to figure out what our ending inventory must be at our cost. The challenge of this uh, process is markups and markdowns. So markups are when we uh, sell something for more than what we plan to sell it for. Markdowns are when we sell something for less than what we thought we should sell it for. And the issue becomes where do we put the markdowns in the process? Do we deduct them and then calculate the ratio between our costs and our retail prices? Or do we first calculate that ratio and then subtract the markdowns? So let's see what happens. Let's start with this uh, super lame uh, case where we don't have any beginning inventory, we don't have any markups, we don't have any markdowns, in fact we don't even have any sales in this lame example. So we buy item A for $5, we intend to sell it for 10. We buy item B for $5, we send, intend to sell it for 10. So we have our inventory at a $10 cost, and we plan to sell it at 20. No markups, no markdowns. So our retail price of goods available for sale is $20. So $10 divided by $20 means that our costs are 50% of our retail prices. We, since there's no sales to subtract, our ending inventory at retail is 20. 20 times 50% is $10. So our estimated inventory, no markups, no markdowns, no sales, 
ten dollars. So markups are when we sell things for more than what we originally planned. Markdowns are when we sell them for less than we originally planned. And that should start us to thinking about market value and uh, damaged goods. And that should start us to thinking about the lower of cost or market value and how we shouldn't have inventory on our books for a number that's misleadingly large. So first, let's use the cost method of handling markdowns. We're going to include them in our ratio calculation. So super simple, lame example, same facts. No beginning inventory. We buy item A for $5. We intend to sell it for $10. We buy item B for $5. We originally intend to sell it for $10. There are no markups, but there is a markdown. We decide that we can't sell item B for $10. We can only sell it for $2. So now the retail prices of our goods available for sale are only $12. So we calculate our ratio, 10 divided by 12 gives us our 83.3%. Our ending inventory at retail prices is our $8 minus, excuse me, our $20 minus our $8 is $12. $12 of inventory at retail price times our cost to retail ratio of 83.3% means that we estimate our ending inventory at $10. Another way to handle markdowns is to deduct them after we've calculated our cost to retail ratio. So this is called the conventional method. Let's look at the same stupid example. No beginning inventory, same purchases, and no markups. Now we calculate our ratio. $10 divided by $20 is 50%. Now let's subtract the markdown, the $8 markdown. Remember, we can only sell this guy for two bucks instead of 10 bucks. We'll subtract that markdown after we've calculated the ratio. We still have the same ending inventory at retail prices, $12, but now the ratio is 50% the 10 divided by the 20. 50 percent times that $12 means that our ending inventory is estimated at six dollars. And that's probably a better number. Remember our inventory should be on our books at the lower of cost or market value. Cost is defined as our cost when we originally bought it. Market value is defined as replacement cost with a ceiling of net realizable value and a floor of net realizable value minus a normal profit margin. So item A should be in our inventory for $5. We think we can sell it for 10 so it doesn't look like there's any reason to mark that thing down. But item B, we can only sell for $2. Minus a normal profit margin of 50% is $1. Five dollars plus one dollar means our inventory at lower of cost or market value is six dollars. So that's why we think the conventional method is a more accurate way of handling markdowns when we're using the retail inventory method. There's other aspects that we have to talk about in uh, intermediate accounting. Things like purchase returns and allowances, purchase discounts and allowances, normal shortages, abnormal shortages, and uh, things like employee discounts and normal shortages. Employee discounts and normal shortages are down here after we calculate the ratio and they only subtract on the retail column. But things like a purchase returns and allowances come out up top out of both columns before we uh, do the ratio. And abnormal shortages come out of both columns before we do the ratio. All right, I hope that helps. Uh, retail inventory method can be um, intimidating and, and scary, but uh, it really isn't that hard if you do a few of them. All right, thanks, hope that helps.